Now that it's 2026, I'm going to show you some of the web design trends that are emerging and growing from last year. First, we have grids, or modular design. This web design trend showcases just how far you can push CSS grids now that they're available on all web browsers. What I like about modular design is how clear and concise the structured layouts make a website look. The result are websites that are easy to navigate, visually coherent, and still utilize columns and rows. They can expand out to adapt to various types of content while still remaining interactive and easy to use. Next up, we have playful design. It's a web design trend that allows the user to play with different elements of the web page through mouse interactions, keyboard interactions, or just scroll events. These sorts of playful websites encourage creativity as well as interactions in a more meaningful way rather than passively viewing a page. Instead, you can have a lot of fun while browsing through. 3D website designs are a lot more common because it's a lot easier to create them. Here's one beautiful example I saw online for this game company called Alchi. Their website has a logo with the this glass morphism and interactivity that moves along with the mouse cursor. Their feature section is a carousel that's also created in 3D and has a slight parallax as you scroll through. Each section of the website has a unique view and as you scroll through they mix in 2D and 3D elements to create more depth for the website along with these beautiful transitions that don't make it feel like you're scrolling through a website but rather that you're engaging with some interactive media. Most of the effort for this web design is centered on the home page with all the 3D elements. However, other pages are still clear and easy to view, like the news page and about us page. Our next web design trend of 2026 is the use of beautiful gradients for backgrounds. Kluk is a perfect example of this. They're doing a number of things to utilize gradients on this website design, including having a background that transitions between different types of mixed gradient colors, from blues and yellows and greens and teals, and all of these colors mix really well. With how beautiful screens can display colors in 2026, it's no wonder that more use of color is seen on web pages. And the use of CSS background color, as well as using SVGs, makes this really easy to implement for website designs. On top of that, they're doing full screen transitions with 3D elements. They've got the mouse interactions interacting with the background gradient itself, adding additional colors to its movement. And the page transitions are so seamless that I can't even tell when I'm leaving one page and heading to the next. Gradients don't always need lots of colors. Here's one simple example, just using different shades of red and black to create a beautiful 3D logo and this design right here. Our next website design trend for 2006 is using illustrations, especially hand-drawn illustrations. Let me show you this example from Flying Papers. They have this hand-drawn illustration mascot, which is on all parts of the page, from selecting cookies to when you land on the page and it animates in, and even the menu selection itself. It definitely makes for a more personal design that makes it feel a lot more memorable when you visit this page. GM Meme is another website that uses hand-drawn illustrations, but to a much larger extent, having it represent almost all parts of the website, from the logo to the hero section, on top of clickable items like buttons or text, as well as even in animations as you mouse over different items. I also like how their website lets you scroll through with this person in the middle, which is kind of anonymous, maybe representing the web browser with a little question mark over them. Feature boxes and header text has hand-drawn animation on top or behind it, as well as a lot of hand-drawn animated sequences like this one over here. It brings a level of personality to a website you just never get from a template. These pigeons are even hilarious, where their droppings are gold coins. Brutalism is still seeing a lot of appearances in 2006. I've seen some great examples where they're mixing a bit of brutalism along with a good design aesthetic and illustrations. Normally, brutalism means using extremely large fonts and images and animations to really drive a huge impact for users when they're browsing a page. However, I'm seeing a lot more new ones these days for designs, like this one here from Stiff that uses brutalism as part of the website design to create pages that still have that huge impact with large text and images and cards, but still have a clear aesthetic. Here's another design from La Boca, which is an ice cream company, and theirs is a lot more brutal. You can definitely see just how large the fonts are, utilizing the entire width of the screen, with these harsh colors and text designs. 
However, this one does do a pretty good job at making the page feel very interesting and engaging, as if you have lots of flavors and options to choose from. One thing about this brutal web design aesthetic that I really liked was their menu at the very top of the page. When you select it, it literally drops from the ceiling as if you accidentally clicked the wrong thing, but here now all of these options are clickable. A really cool menu indeed. Our next web design trend of 2026 is gamification. This is where you turn your website from a regular website into something more like an interactive game you can play to browse through different sections. I especially like this one from Samsung Ninja. This is for their own portfolio that allows you to browse through the pages by controlling this cat creature, which is almost like a little platformer that can double jump. And while you can still control the website through the menu at the very top, creating this sort of gamification to interact with people viewing the page definitely makes this person stand out when it comes to things like 3D interactivity and creativity. One more example that stood out was from Coffee Design. They've gamified their website design by creating this 3D interactivity interactive interface that allows you to control what looks like their own studio or room, jumping onto their laptop to see recent work, going on their whiteboard to see how they design different types of mockups, seeing some of their content that they've created in the past through a more visual way of like small TikTok videos, and just allowing you to view and explore the space in your own way, which is great. And of course, like the other examples, they still do have the menu at the very top left, which allows you to just click through rather than having to use the 3D control system. So while I know that gamification can be tricky, these sorts of things definitely catch the eye and are memorable once you see and explore them. In 2026, we're seeing a lot of web designs being built without code, using no-code tools like Wix Studio, which is also the sponsor of today's video. So let's check out how that's done. One of the benefits are all the pre-made templates it comes with. This means you have access to all the latest web design trends like brutalism, Gen Z design, and micro animations, but you can also design or customize your own. Here's one really cool one I like that utilizes mouse interactions to create a small little avatar that kind of follows where your mouse cursor is on the screen. And here's another one that uses special videos with transparent backgrounds to create these interconnected sections between different parts of the website. These sorts of transparent videos can be used in many ways to create really cool effects like this one here as well. One of the main benefits benefits of using something like Wix Studio is that a lot of these animations come baked in and are really easy to implement into your own website design, and this allows you to stay relevant and up to date with the latest trends incorporating them into your own website designs. If you want to learn a little bit more about Wix Studio, I have full crash courses on it, or you can just check out the link in the description below. Our next design trend is Gen Z design. If you grab all the design trends we've looked at so far, set them to 200%, Gen Z design is what you get. It's it's like having brutalism mixed in with animation and old school 1990s web design aesthetics, you get these sorts of designs. This often happens because the new generation of web designers are using no-code platforms in order to be fully expressive and creative in creating their website designs. Gen Z design often uses highly expressive colors with mouse interactions and animations on almost every single element that's possible. And this sometimes reminds me of this new TikTok generation of web designer that makes sure that your attention is never lost. Here's another cool example of Gen Z design from this company called Robot, which does a lot of marketing and video. And as you can see, rather than just having a home screen video, they have a video inside of a video. Text elements have motion when you mouse over them, and even screen section breaks happen in a zigzag pattern rather than just a linear line. The only issue is that whenever I browse through Gen Z designed websites, I start to feel old, like I'm no longer able to keep up with this new generation and style. Anti-design is a web design trend that I introduced in 2025 and it's still pretty popular moving into this new year. It's when you create a website design without the traditional navigations or ways of interacting with it. Like this one here, where your mouse cursor kind of unwinds the role of the website design itself. Then when you're ready to browse through it, you can simply click through and view this role in an interactive fashion, kind of like a TikTok feed where you get to see it on the visuals on the sides or click through and view it closer up. It's a really cool way to create a design and I'm sure that this would also work on mobile in pretty interesting ways. It's hard to find good anti-design websites because they do require a lot of creativity, but when you throw away the rule book and create websites like this, it's definitely memorable and also a source of inspiration. 
Next up is minimalism. This web design trend used to be about having very little on the page. However, now it's evolved into doing more with less. For example, you could use less colors, focusing more on the text elements themselves. Or for example, you can have a good use of line and symmetry to focus a person's eyes onto certain elements on the page themselves. And all of this still represents minimalism because you're trying to have a lot less on the page with main focus points that draw the user's attention. Here's a really good example of minimalism on a portfolio design for this one here, which is for a UI UX designer. And she's created a page that is filled with interactivity, but mostly black and white with a clear user of negative space, focusing in your eyes on certain key points, such as photos or text, or even 3D elements of case studies, where there's not too much on the page besides the item you're looking at. This is great use of minimalism in each one of the design sections, and showcases why using space effectively in a web design is so important. This next design trend is called variable fonts, and it's something I'm seeing more often on web pages, as font families have larger variations to select from. Figma has put together a really great web page as a resource here of all the different ways you can utilize variable fonts. And you've probably already seen some of these examples in use in previous pages. Things like changing the weight of the font while you're previewing it, or adding a stronger slant to the axis of the font to make it look more like italics. So while in the past font families only just had a few weights such as light, medium, bold, and extra bold, nowadays you can even have icon packages with animation baked into the font family so that as you progress over time it can change from one icon to another or even have custom fonts that allow you to express yourself more than usual. At the start of this design trend video we talked about 3D being a design trend but mixing 2D and 3D elements is now also pretty popular on new web designs. Here's a great example of that from Diverso Studio that's created this web page that has these 2D elements and text and line art along with 3D elements happening in the background. Some of them follow the mouse cursor, some of them are used for transitions from one section of the page to another, and some of them are just used as a menu like here to contact us. I really like what they've done here because they've added a level of engagement to this page by mixing these 2D and 3D elements together in a way that just makes it fun to interact with this website design. It's no longer enough to just have one trend or style in a website. These days, websites are incorporating multiple types of trends and mixing them together. Take a look at this example from Brand Apart, a design studio from Paris. They're using high resolution animated mouse interactions that fade in and out. It's a design trend I saw a lot in 2005. They're also using full screen videos. However, rather than having this in the hero section, it's in the following one, which is below the fold. Their next section uses Ben grids featuring different bits of work they've completed. Vento grids are still really popular in 2026, and it's a design trend I don't see going away. There are also a lot of macro animations happening throughout the page as you scroll through, such as this circle of images that rotates through as you scroll up and down. Another example is using mouse interactions. These ones here are animated, and they kind of have this Tinder style example where they slide through as you're scrolling through the page. As you can see through this page, no one does design trend is used, but rather a mix of multiple design trends, and I think this is the way to go in 2006. 